Welcome to Tech Ripster channel. In this video, we are going to show you how we can connect to a Redshift cluster by using JDBC connectivity with DB Viewer. If you are new to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel using the bell icon. We'll open the aws.amazon.com and then basically we'll do a sign in. Here you will enter your credentials. Okay, once you logged in here, so here we will go to uh, AWS Redshift. So we will open the Amazon Redshift. Here you can see that already a few clusters which I have created. Now we will create a new one. Uh, name your Redshift cluster. So here we will give it Redshift cluster demo. Since we are using the free trial, we'll select the free trial. I think this is the default configuration you can see. Uh, here you have to specify the username and password. So we'll keep the username as AWS user only and password you can set it up. The only thing to note here is that like uh, you cannot use at the right uh, at special characters which I mentioned below as a part of a password. So we can create from cluster. This activity will take some time. So in the meantime, right, we can get our JDBC drivers downloaded from here. So we are going to use the zip version. So we'll download it. Since I already had it, basically was mentioning about file being present. So we'll just re-download it. So this zip will have all the drivers in the required dependency which we can use it to connect to a Redshift cluster. We will extract this file. So here you can see the list of executable jars files which are required. Now here we are using dbviewer community edition. Uh, we will select the connection type as Redshift. And here we will basically have to like the host name and this thing will come back to it. So these are the configuration which we have. I think we don't need to touch most of them. So now I think uh, our instance is successfully set up. So we'll open here and we'll copy this JDBC URL. So this is JDBC URL. It basically has the host name, the port and the database name. Here by default it has created the dev database. So now the credential which we are used in the previous screens, uh, we'll have to enter those. So these are some of the configuration, but we don't have to change anything here. So we will go to edit driver settings here in the libraries right I have already added this but like whatever we downloaded from the zip you can add it explicitly here so for the connectivity to work so you can use this add jars and basically the zip which you downloaded all the uh, jars you can add it. So once you add it I think then we should we are good here. So now if we do a test connectivity, this will fail. Uh, the reason for is that like when you created the cluster, by default it did not allow the public access. And that's why this will be, will get uh, timed out. Okay, now we'll basically fix it.
So here you can see that the public accessibility is disabled. Now we need to enable those. How do we do that? We go to the action and modify public publicly accessible. Here you set the enable and yeah, that's it. It will take some time to for the changes to get reapplied. Now we'll have to basically modify the VPC setting to basically allow the external connections. So here we'll go to VPC then security group. Uh, here we will basically modify the inbound rules. Here we'll add one more rule. We'll go to edit inbound rule and we'll add rule and we'll here select the red shirt. So you can see that its port is by default selected, uh, which we have already specified. Now here we have to specify the IP address and to get that IP address, we'll basically type ip4.me, which will give you a public IP address. Once you have this, copy this and paste it into under the search bar and select hyphen 32 and give it a description name like this is basically you are enabling it for redshift click on save rules now we are pretty much done with the changes if you do the test connectivity we should be able to connect now we are pretty much done with the connectivity uh, we'll basically rename this connection to a meaningful name and then we'll basically go connect to the database and we'll uh, query the sample data. Why do we need basically to have this kind of external interface? I think most of the developer are comfortable using any, any particular data, database tool, right? In this example, like uh, if you want to use DBUR, I think this can be a good option. Uh, the reason is that like if you, the, even the Redshift has their own um, SQL editor, there is version 1 and version 2, you can check it there. But I think getting used to it could be cumbersome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such videos.